Hello and shalom everybody. Welcome back to the sixth video in this series and I believe um, if I can fit it all in this will be the last one um, for this portion and then we'll go into the book of Jonah um, that also gives some confirmation to these uh, 36 hours. Um, I just wanted to make a quick mention that if you're one of the ones that are following through and watching these videos and, and accepting what's here, then um, just know that by doing so and by meditating on the information that's presented where you are consciously aware of the sacrifice that was made for us at the cross. I mean, as followers of the way and believers, we all know what happened, but um, unless you're uh, someone who takes communion regularly, um, which I admit in, in my own walk, I have um, been guilty of not doing as often as I should, but I do know that through this teaching and what the Ruach HaKodesh has revealed and, and shown me, it has brought me closer into a greater appreciation for the sacrifice that was made. So in effect, this teaching is in a way um, a communion. It's um, you are remembering his sacrifice and that's what he asked his disciples to do at that last Passover meal he had with them you know that every time they broke bread and drank the fruit of the vine that they would remember him and his sacrifice and you know it's only natural that we should because if he hadn't done what he did we would all be sentenced to fulfill the punishment of our guilt but through his sacrifice of course he made a way for us to go back home to be with him and the father and our home where we came from so uh, I just wanted to say that because um, you know this definitely has made me um, realize the significance of his sacrifice because I've you know went into such great detail in studying it and presenting it so I hope that it blesses you in that way okay so let's get on with um, this this teaching here I just wanted to recap recap what I went over in the last video um, talking about the 18 hours of darkness because uh, some people might be confused you know what is what, what's the 18 and the 36 why you know why you bring up a new number so um, the, the reason for the 18 hours and the comparison um, or bringing it into the light is to compare it to Joshua's long day um, because if you figured out the time frames of when the Sun actually stopped and then when it started up again 36 hours later according to that uh, Joshua 8864 then you calculate the days I'm sorry the hours that were actually nighttime hours that were made into light because the Sun didn't move so normally it would have gotten dark but it didn't and that was a total of 18 hours so there were 18 hours of what should have been normal dark hours or nighttime hours that Joshua was given as light so that he could advance in the battle and have victory victory over the enemy so um, because Yeshua's long day is a mirror image of that and Joshua is a type and shadow in the word of Yahshua 
it's just interesting that um, there's everything goes back to the mirror image and I'm going to show you an example to help you kind of understand um, and I, I, that also has to do with the one long day because as we know or as I hope we all are in, in agreement and believe that um, it was actually the two 12 or 12 hour days that were rolled into one so one was like a mirror image of the other but there were different events going on so it was opposite stuff as far as the events and their progression um, the second day should have preceded the first day in the events process but it didn't so um, so that's what the 18 hours is that Joshua was given 18 hours of extra daylight and then it was 18 hours of actual darkness that Yahshua um, experienced and we went over that at the end of the last video so let me go ahead and just read this to you um, Yahshua's long day was day one and day two combined or overlapped from 12 a.m. of day one to 12 a.m. of day two two 12 hour days um, normally we would consider that a 24 hour day but it was actually the two two different timelines so day one there were 15 hours of darkness as we went over the previous video and day two there were three hours of darkness and again darkness meaning spiritual darkness not not uh, nighttime darkness so you get 15 plus 3 that's 18 and Joshua's long day was from 12 p.m. and then if it had like I said if, if the only way I can think to how you would calculate the 36 hours and we do know that it was 36 hours because that verse in, in Jasher says that it was about 36 moments and you know that's not <laughs> gonna be minutes so of course it's hours um, so if you calculate and we know that it was high noon when the sun stopped in the sky so if you just calculate 36 hours from noon then you go 24 hours later you get to 12 noon again and then all you, then you have to add another 12 hours so then you come to 12 a.m. so if someone was wearing a watch like a modern watch that kept time even though the sun stayed up for 36 hours their watch would have said it's midnight when the sun started to move again so he was given the 18 hours that were normally dark that were made light um, and they were the hours of 6 p.m. to 12 I'm sorry 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 12 hours plus 6 p.m. to 12 a.m. six hours of light given which equals 18 hours so Joshua however did not experience 18 hours of darkness because his request unto Yah was a blessing towards him therefore he experienced the whole 36 hours with only light Yahshua on the other hand had to take on those 18 hours of darkness as a curse for our sakes and blessed be his Kodesh name um, so it was a blessing that Joshua received extra 18 hours of daylight Yahshua received the curse of 18 hours of darkness so there's that let's move on to the next slide so we can um, get this uploaded as quick as possible okay so here's a, an image just that gives you a visual um, explanation of uh, first and second Passover day one and day two and and uh, in my mind <laughs> how it looks um, so when you look at this image we know in our mind that in reality there's only one mountain and only one um, skyline in front of it with the trees but there's a reflection in the water which makes it look like there's two mountains and two tree lines um, so just think of you know but so it's one image so think of first and pass, second Passover day one and day two as this image where uh, 
one is um, uh, on top and the other one is reversed and, and uh, I don't want to say on the bottom but reversed let's just say that so um, we know that in this image of the mountain above is the original and the image on the lake is the mirrored image or copy so if you flip the image of the copy the image below right side up everything is reversed um, and that's what happened with the second Passover the trees that are shadowed on the left will now be on the right side of the image so in other words day two second Passover is a copy of the first but as an overlay because the events are different so the whole day itself is in reverse there were hours of each day that overlap so that the two days now become one long day even though the time on that day itself did not go backwards of course so day two or the opposite mirror image was that it ended at midnight where day one began in other words certain events that should have happened first happened after certain other events the long day itself was a mixture of events that in the physical couldn't have preceded other events but the events that occurred on the proper dates according to when they should occur in scripture happen precisely as the word commands so the other 18 hours of the three days and three nights of the Passover events would not be considered darkness hours because these hours were hours of light for instance, the 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. time overlap when the sun went dark uh, was not experienced in day two or second Passover because it was a new day that had begun and therefore those events did not, did not reoccur that occurred in day one at the cross or first Passover. Only the time of obscurity was overlapped, not the events, just the time frame neither were the hours of 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on day one included in the hours of darkness because Yahshua's work is now finished. Yahshua was spending the remaining hours of day two 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. which is six hours with his disciples during the preparation time for the meal and these hours were not sorrowful but jo joyful as they had the meal together in fellowship and in worship therefore they're not dark hours um, or you know hours of spiritual darkness the remaining 12 hours of light the third day were those hours of rest as his conquer over death had been accomplished in day one so there were 18 hours of darkness and 18 hours of light equaling 36 hours that made up the three days and three nights in the heart of the earth okay guys so i'm going to end part six here um part seven is all ready to go i actually had combined it with this one but it was 30 minutes long so i just cut it in half so stay tuned for that one to be loaded right after this one and um, that will be part seven and that will be the end of this part of the teaching so stay tuned stick around uh, y'all bless you and i hope that you have a wonderful day i love you and bye bye